All right, we are recording. Um, don't forget if you are new here to use the raise hand feature. Um, it's under the chat button. Um, that gets your hand up and gets you in line to ask Don a question or to comment on something. Um, so we'll start with Joey first. And go ahead, Joey. Okay, good evening, good evening everybody. Um, look here, I got a question. I built one of these um, Freeman style small high beetle traps and used the, the, the particular screen for the, what is it? I think it's point. 03 aperture for the small high beetles. Anyway, um, this is my first year messing with bees, and I put like a uh, like a roasting pan inside of it. But instead of using mineral oil, I used peanut oil. And like I said, I'm just now really getting into it somewhat. But I've got six hives right now. And the <clears throat> the bees were doing fine. I mean, they were steadily going in and out, in and out, big time. I'm talking about I had two brood chambers and a honey super on it, which you could call the middle brood chamber kind of honey super slash, uh, you know, brood chamber. Because I, I have no plans on pulling honey off, you know, for the fall. Um, but anyway, it, it did great for four days. I went out there yesterday morning going to, going to check the, the sugar water and everything and I pulled some empty empty quart jars off and the only single hive that I tried that Freeman uh, trap that particular hive I was looking through there because I've already went through my all my beehives and kind of brought them down much lower you know, to help them get through the season and instead of having, you know, too much bee space or too much, too much room to where they couldn't handle all the friends, what have you. But when I checked this hive, there was not one bee in that whole hive. <laughs> Any suggestions? Where did well, I screw up at? Where, where do you live? I live in Fortson, Georgia, just North Columbus, Georgia. All right. Uh my opinion on the beetle trap, you can treat your beetles a lot of different ways, but if you're going to put oil in there, if that's what you want to yeah. do, I would use mineral oil. If you use mineral. vegetable oil, peanut oil, it's going to get rank. It's going to attract beetles. Now, as far as your hive up and leaving, had you treated yeah. prior for beetles or mites? No, I had not. Okay, you should start doing mite treatments basically in September. You should do right. five or six of them before winter sets in. And okay. right now, where you at, you shouldn't be feeding bees. If you don't have enough in there on your hives, you're going to yeah. cause them to go in there and rob, or you're going to get a bunch of yellow jackets going in. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I've I, I run my little reducers to where it was – just enough bee space for maybe two bees wide to get up in there and, you know, to get out just because of the fact of the yellow jackets and, <coughs> excuse me, and also I took some gallon jugs and made some traps for the yellow jackets, what have you. And um, as far as yellow jackets, I pretty well had them as best maintained as you can possibly have them if maintained. You, if you're running three boxes high, and you're covering all them frames with bees. Right. You need at least three inches opening at the bottom. Three inches right? wide, three eighths high. If you okay. go any smaller than that, with that amount of bees, you're going to get yeah. a moisture problem. And that okay. could be why your bees have left. Okay. The more bees you got in there, the more ventilation. And uh, right. I always run one and an eighth inch holes underneath okay. my hand hole on all my boxes. Okay. But I put a screen over them in the wintertime. So if there's too much ventilation, the bees will propolize it. That's right. the way I handle it. So each right. person is going to handle their situation a little different. Right. Uh, there's people that are big believers in screen bottom boards. But screen bottom boards for a commercial beekeeper doesn't work out as good for me. Because yeah. you get too much drafting there. And if you put... Uh, the little sliding 
uh, I guess, as a piece of wood or uh, that political sign to close right. it off. Right. I think then you cause yourself more problems because bees yeah. have to clean that bottom board, and you're going to get a buildup of wax moth eggs, right. small high beetles, that type stuff in there. So right. I, I use a philosophy of what's in the woods is what I'm going to do. I right. don't use metal on my lids. I don't use inner covers. I don't put any screens on them or uh, queen excluders. Uh-huh. Now, the only time I use queen excluders would mm-hmm. be like when I have new students and I'm teaching them how to shake packages so right. we can isolate the queen down below because right. we have to get into a, a box and we have to be in and out in less than three minutes because right. if you're in it any longer than that, you're not going to shake a bunch of packages out. Right. I see. Okay. All righty. Um Okay. I, I, Watch the videos. I've got, uh, there's about 400 videos up there. It yeah. covers just about any topic you want. And if you're having problems, you know, I'm always here on the, the chats. You can ask or get on my Facebook group. You can ask there. I've right. got moderators in there. They'll answer your questions. You know, if you're trying to call me, that's a lot of people don't understand. I'm right. of the generation. I don't carry a phone. I don't text. Oh, I don't yeah. carry a cell phone. Absolutely. I keep a house phone and that's it. So yeah, yeah. I understand that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I certainly appreciate that, and okay. I'll, I'll I'll come back in a little bit later. Let some other okay. folks ask this question. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, nobody's got their hands up. Everybody's being shy tonight. Well, let's talk about nukes then. If you're going to get into beekeeping, you better figure out where you're going to get bees. And when I'm talking about nukes, uh, learn how to buy nukes. I cruise around and watch other people's sites all the time. I see people advertising nukes that are ready for pickup that I wouldn't have. Now, I have to buy nukes because we can't make enough here. And if you're a student of mine, when we have these chats, if you have a web page, get up, tell people where you're at, what you're selling. That's a way for you to get them out. Now, we bought 200 nukes this year because we can't make enough. And I turned down 20%. And people will have a nuke there, and there's only three frames of bees there. Or they'll pull a frame up, and they put a starter strip in there. And over half of that frame, if you look at the comb straight on in, you should have good hexagon cells. What I'm seeing is stretched out cells three and four inches down, and big globs in the corners of drone comb. Personally, I would not do a video of that stuff and put it up on a a chat site or to get business because it's just bad business. I try to tell students when I'm teaching them here, look at a nuke that we're selling. If it don't look good to you for some reason, because we have students work these boxes all the time. If you're loading a, a customer's box from my stock and it don't look good, and you wouldn't want to buy it, then don't put it off on somebody. If it looks good that you'd buy it, then load it. And I try to tell people, when you look at a nuke, be sure you see the queen walking in there. Look for, you know, eggs, larvas. You want bees in different conditions, in different stages. Now, nukes are great if you don't have any experience. Packages are your best bet if you're going to get in to make money at it because, For the price of one nuke, you can buy two packages. And when you buy a package, most people don't understand. Put them in a five-frame box to get them started because you have to have heat. It's like a baby nursery. If you can't develop enough heat in there, the queen's not going to lay. She's not going to expand out. A smaller box, they expand out faster. As soon as they're expanded out, then put them into an eight or a ten, whatever you feel comfortable using. That's the the philosophy that I have, and I'm trying to to, uh, encourage people that is getting into bees to look at that stuff, think about it. And if you're thinking about getting into business, there's a bunch of my students in here right now, and I hope you can ask them questions. And you can make money at this, but it's not like hunting. You're going to have to work. It's hard work. If you want to just have bees, do the honey route or do the pollinating. There's money to be made in a lot of avenues in beekeeping. All right, now, anybody else? Now, here's Greg. Now, he's already getting uh, orders up. Now, he's come down here one time, and 
and I've got uh, – there's uh, – Mary's up there in Tennessee. There's uh, Jim from Texas. I've got students from all over. Don't be shy. Ask them if you've got a question, if you're thinking about getting in it, or if you've got those little heebie-jeebies and you don't want to get into it, now's the time to ask them. Okay. Speaking of Greg, he's going to be first up. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Don, I had a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we also want to let everybody know that we're running uh, your packages and nukes from your place all the way up through uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania. And uh, there's a couple other routes that we're looking at as well, if we can get enough interest. There seems to be plenty of interest. So uh, it's, it's nice having bees that sell themselves, like you say. My question is, is when, when would be a pretty fair deadline to relay to customers to get uh, their money to us uh, so we can buy your bees? What, what month are we, are we getting too close to where we might be running out of stock? Well, I would start getting your – we don't normally ourselves take our, our deposits and stuff until February. But there's okay. been such a shortage, such a high demand, we're already starting to book out. So we're booking up good right now all the way of March. And my son has got a phone. He's on it all the time. So if you need to check your order or place an order, if you can't get a hold of me, call Stephen, and he can let you know because he's got a schedule right there of how many packages is available. And as far as I know, I think the first three loads in March are almost sold out, and over half of our overwintered nukes is already spoken for. So that's something to think about, too. Great. If, if folks are interested in uh, your bees and they're in those states up through there, they can uh, find me on Facebook at Greg Burns. They can uh, find us uh, at our website at naturesimagefarm.com. They can order right online and see more information about the route. Okay. Okay. All right. Over to Pat. Go ahead, Pat. Oh, hold on. Can't, be, <laughs> can't unmute you. You can do it on your own. Um. There you go. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, Leon wanted me to ask a couple of questions about two frame starter boxes. Um, how do you work those? Can you talk about them a little bit? You, you talking about when we start our two frame starter box? Right. Do you do it with a queen cell? Um, how do you do that? Well, we actually, we're trying to teach people to build numbers fast. So what we'll do usually in the first load is we'll take and get extra queens, mated queens. We'll take a two-frame nuke, and we'll set a five-frame medium over the top of it. And we'll put the queen that comes in the package in one side. Now, there's a divider. You've got a divider in a five-frame box, so you've got an entrance in the front, one in the back. We'll put that second queen on the other side. Then we'll take and dump the package. We'll spray it down a little bit and dump it across the top into that five frame box. And we'll take our hive tool and divide it out. Now that's one way we do it. And then once they get established, we'll pull both of those queens out and then remove that box and put two five frame boxes there and put the queens in that and add more brood. Now the next way we do is to show you how to install queen cells. And when we do that, we put one frame of honey, one frame with a starter strip on each side. We drop a queen cell, or we set a queen cell between the frames on each side, and we'll dump three frames of bees in there. Basically, what we're doing is going to three different hives and pulling a good heavy frame of bees. And we'll check it close, make sure there's no queen on it, and we just shake it. And what we're doing is you use the box and we set an empty box over it and it acts like a funnel. That way you're not shaking bees into the air and they go right into the box. You lose very few that way. That's just two of the ways we do it. I mean, there's, there's so many ways to skin the cat on beekeeping. I'm trying to show people how to take limited amount of bees and build numbers fast. Mm -hmm. It's up to them how to, you know, increase from that point. Does okay. that help cover what you think? Question. Um, Come over here. Hang on, I'm trying to get him to come over here. He's Tell Leon, don't be so bashful. <laughs> <laughs> he gets me started on these questions. So then, um, so it's a two-frame starter, and it's in a five-frame box. 
And right. do, they, do they stay there till they build out to the five frame nuke and then you go from there? No, they're, they'll stay there until the queen's out and starts to lay. And then because you have an entrance facing one way and then on the back side, we actually move that box off and then put those bees from each side into two separate boxes, which will add three frames. We can either add a frame of brood that's hatching from another hive. It's just a really fast way to build up. Basically, you can drop a package in there in seven days, have a nuke ready to go. Okay. And um, do you, how do you do the two frame nukes? Do you put them on a pallet and stack them close together, put bricks on them, keep them from falling over? How do you handle the two they're, frame They're not a two frame nuke. They're a five frame nuke with a slot down the center. There's a piece of political sign in there. So they're basically, they're nine and a quarter inches wide. Okay, well, I think Joe May was saying that he was building two frame boxes. So maybe well, I'm using. There's a lot of people that's doing a lot of things. And the thing that I try to tell all my students is there's a lot of people that's going to show you a lot of different things. Here's what I try to say on a five frame box, you have a divider in it, you pull that divider out. Now you can use it as a five frame box, or if something happens, you become allergic, you can sell it as a five frame box. I got gotcha. Next thing I got to say is people are doing two frame and three frame. I had a guy come here five, six years ago, just contrary. He had to make a seven frame box. <laughs> and the same thing. If you get allergic and you want to sell this stuff, who in the right mind is going to buy a two frame box or a five yeah. frame or a seven frame, you know, do something so, that is easy to sell. Keep it standard. It's just like a 10 frame box. I tell people, I put a divider in the middle. You got two five frame nukes. Mm -hmm. The five frame with the divider in, you use less equipment and increase numbers. And then when it builds up or if you don't want to use that, pull that divider out and add that extra frame because it's a standard five frame box. Okay. So do you have the entrances facing two different Opposite ways. So that Opposite people don't get confused as to where to come back after they've made it? Nope. They're, they're, uh, well, we set them up with the mated queens. We don't have that problem. If we're setting them up with cells, you've got an entrance facing in each way. And if you've seen all the ones we have on our website and our pictures, we paint a lot of different colors. So we try to alternate colors so we don't put them all the same color in, in right. any row. Yeah, we've done that, and we've done some diagrams on the front yeah. around the entrance. Well, I think bees are smart, but I don't think they're, you know, I see people put numbers on, put different designs. I don't think they I can think, read. <laughs> I think a, a full piece of something. Now, Jim come here years ago and bought 25 nukes, all brand new wood, and he went to the dollar store and got construction paper, op, different colors, and just put thumbtacks on the front. And it works good. Jim's here. He tell you, you know, there's a lot of ways you can do this stuff. Okay. That, that's a good idea. Just something to let the mm -hmm. queens remember where they went off. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you put your mating nukes on the ground or do you have them up on something? Basically, uh, well, I run mine different than my son. My son runs his up almost waist high. I run mine on an eight inch block with uh, a four by four across it or if I don't have a four by four, I take two two by fours with a six inch piece in the middle as a spreader. And then I set my boxes on that. But okay. now the five frame boxes that we run and the eight frame stuff, we usually run them a minimum of two blocks high with a, either a floor joist on it or a two by six. Mm -hmm. And we okay. run eight to 10 to a row. Okay. All right. I think that's okay. all for me for right now. Okay. Okay. Next up, Big Luscious. Go ahead. Oh, hold on. There you go. Yep. Uh, so I had a, a quick question. Uh, Don, you've got these new, uh, the, or the uh, the five frame split in half to uh, two frame and two frame. Have right. you designed a, a new feeder to go on the top of there of your, uh, of your high top feeder that's got a feeder for each side or I know well, Joe May has one, but I think he makes those himself or 3D prints them or something like that. So I try to keep it as simple as possible. And for that there, what I'm doing is I'm using a Powerade bottle, which is a little over a one inch contain, uh, diameter. And I'm drilling a hole on the backside of a uh, 
piece of the Dantec, and then on the other side, on the front. So we use two bottles. Now, once the hive gets strong enough, then we're going to the shoe box, which is a one-piece feeder, and it comes up the front. Now, drilling a hole and putting a, bo a bottle in there is so much faster than building those feeders. So okay. right now, people that's getting started in beekeeping, they got all the time in the world. I mean, I see people starting out here, paint beautiful designs, murals all over those beehives, and then in three years, they're like me. They're lucky to get paint in the box. Right. So, you know, you got to take it from what you're doing. Okay. Now, one other thing I saw, it was, I watched, I think, almost all of your videos, if not all of them. <laughs> and I saw one place you were talking about how um, it takes a lot of water uh, to make new bees. And so my question is, is, is there a time when you actually need to feed just straight water versus sugar water? To well, help I have bees a grow? bird bath out there. Yeah. I keep a lot of water in all the time. Uh, my philosophy is if you're going to make, uh, make money in bees, feed year round. If you want to pull honey, uh, pull it in the springtime, get what you want. That's what I've done this past year. I pulled about 15 quarts. That's mine. The rest I left on or I used it for split. But now if you want to uh, say you want to sell honey and you don't want chemical in it and you don't want to use oxalic acid, Pull your honey in the springtime and then treat them bees. If you're not treating them, you're going to lose them. You're going to have to okay. treat one way or the other. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm glad we got some good questions coming in tonight. Yes, we do. Um, over to, where is he? He's on the second page. Joe May. Hang on. There you go. Yeah, Pat, maybe I misspoke or you misunderstood. I'm running 230 nukes divided into two frames, so that's 460 double frame boxes. That's the way I run mine. Um, to Big Luscious, uh, I'm in talks with a plas plastic injection mode company, and hopefully the feeders and robin screens and laying cages will be available by the end of next, uh, 2019, I hope. Things work out. Uh, if you guys need orders from up here in the north, you need to get them in pretty quick. I'm filling up <laughs> rather quick, especially on Queens. I'm probably out into uh, second week in May on Queens right now. So if you're thinking about it, you ought to get your orders in. Uh, and the, the double two-frame boxes work really well. Or the nuke box divided into two doubles. I run them all last year, and I'm real pleased with them. That's all I got. Okay. No, let's see. Nobody else has their hands up. It's all you, Don. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Mary's up in uh, uh, Tennessee there. Now, if she's ready to sell bees, uh, if you're one of my students now, be sure you mention your web page. I don't know if Mary's got hers up yet. And Jim, I think, has got his up pretty well ready. Joe May's got his, and I think quite a few other people. That my screen is so small, it's hard to get over here and see everybody. Mary, you want to say anything tonight? Or are you just listening? <laughs> Come on. Uh, hold on. Yeah, for some reason, I can't unmute people, some people tonight. There you hey. go, Mary. Mute. Okay. Uh, we're working on getting the website up. I think we've got, I'm trying to decide exactly what I want to sell. So hopefully in a few weeks, I'll have made that decision and then can get it going. Okay. okay. But in Tennessee now, I have to get inspected. And I'll tell you what, our state inspector is a bear to work with. He just will not. I put in last year to get him to come out here and it totally got blown away. And I talked to him again at the convention and he said I had to put in in December and hopefully he could get me worked in. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know I what else to do. I wouldn't that. think they would be that far backed up, but uh, as long as you've got an application in, in just about any state, you should be all right. And then, you okay. know, the first year or the first time to get your inspection, um, I probably talked about it on a couple of my other videos. Be there be sure you stand there with the inspector and keep an eye on that inspector. 
treat that inspector like a new student because this is your investment. I've seen inspectors come from different states. When I lived in Ohio and I lived in South Georgia where an inspector doesn't care, that open hive up, go right to the middle frame and don't even spread them apart and just rip that frame out, look at it, and sometimes even drop cleans on the ground. So if you don't like what they're doing, what I, I've done with my inspectors, tell them, I tell him, tell me which hive you want to inspect, tell me what frame, I'll pull it and I'll show you. And otherwise, you know, when they get out of that truck, look at what they're doing. He is the bee inspector. He's checking for disease. If he comes over with goatskin gloves, that's a no-no. He should be wearing nitrile gloves. And if you want to really get sticky about it, he should be wearing booties and a, a clean throwaway bee suit if you've got a large operation because he can contaminate your stuff. And okay. look in the back of the bee truck, you know, especially if you've got customers coming. Do not let them bring dead outs to your property because it could cost you your living, your livelihood. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go over to, let's see, Dennis. Go ahead, Dennis. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. we hear you. All right, some of you guys are setting up commercially. Um, you're using PayPal and Discover any of the cards. What do they charge you to use that? Commission wise, do you know? You should know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. When people send me stuff, I think it's running probably three to five percent, depends on the amount. But now I know some of my students have got there's a thing out there called Square, and you can just put it on your iPhone and just zip the card through it. I'm just old school, you know. You send me a check, that works good. It got cash, that works, you know. I mean, the more you get into it, you're going to have to have somebody doing all this. You know, my wife takes care of marking orders down, keeping up with that, and it's a full-time job. So if you got to worry about credit cards and everything else, it's that much more. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah. And, Joe, I'm going to send you all these tire kickers I got. They like to talk. What do you have? Spend an hour talking about their bees, and I'm wasting time trying to get stuff done. <laughs> do you realize why I don't sell honey? <laughs> well, I'm trying to sell bees, but they want two hours worth of talking about their bees and tying mm -hmm. me up. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the, our, <laughs> the game. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, you had a question or comment? Yeah, I got a comment. Um, I forgot to say that Little Bits Honey Bees is my uh, dot com is my uh, web page, and I run Don's Queens, and I run uh, six other pure blood lines, the Italians and Carnoians and uh, Caucasian, a bunch of them. Uh, something else I was going to say about the comment somebody else said. Oh, God. <laughs> You're getting catching up to me getting all timers yeah, or some yeah, timers. Yeah, talk about the inspector, Don. Uh, the inspector I got here in Indiana is really good, but uh, I make her um, wash her hands with uh, with uh, alcohol. Yeah, you know, the alcohol wash, and she puts yeah. on rubber gloves. And I make and I got I got an alcohol right there. I make her wash her hive tool, and I yeah. don't let her get in my boxes. I mm -hmm. hand her the frame, and when if I hand her the frame, got the queen, and I said, hey. Wake up, my queen's on that frame. Watch what you're doing. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she she's good. She she uh, she appreciates that really. Well, I mean, there's, no, the there's no training out there for the inspectors. You know, I mean, they they put them out there. They give them a short crash course, and then they're supposed to know something. But you know, it goes back to common sense. A lot of people is not using common sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, definitely, they, they need not have. Uh, she does wear her regular bee suit. I don't like that, but I don't know if I guess I got any choice on that. But that's all I got. All I can think of. I seem like I had another comment from somebody said, and I forgot what it was. Well, back. every time I hear comments, sometimes it jogs my memory a little bit. And uh, if you're a new beekeeper and you're going to get into this to make a living, don't buy breeder stock right off. Get production stock. I mean, if you kill production stock, you're only losing up to 50 bucks, 25 to 50 bucks. You buy breeder stock and you're not used to handling bees, catching queens. You got a 250 to a $500 investment there. So think twice. 
I wouldn't say buy breeder stock until you're probably three years into commercial beekeeping and you're producing a lot of queens. Now, I used to run several different lines. Uh, I run basically one mutt based together, and I bring in, uh, I've got Jason's stock here now, and I'll be getting some more of that next year, and I'm just going to let them intermingle. Um, because I find that they seem to be more gentle and be more resilient. So that's just an old man's opinion. Uh, there's no point unless you're trying to breed for a living to breed a purebred stock and try to keep it pure. And if you're going to run nine different lines, you're going to have to have nine separate lines and hope no one around there has got any kind of much growing too. So that's something to think about. Yeah, well, you know, unless you're into the AI, that helps things a little bit on if you're AI. And, uh, but uh, another question I want to ask you, just run by you. This, this winter has been a weird winter. It was November. The whole month was cold. I've, I've been down to 14 several nights in, in there. And, but and then it warms back up in the 60s, and these bees are flying. Am, am I, are they going to wear my bees out, my winter bees? Is it going to run your winter bees out? Is it going to wear them out? Oh, I don't think they're like machinery. I mean, you're going to have some fatalities. I mean, I walk around my yard going out and getting the mail, and I walk down my driveway, and I find an occasional dead bee in the driveway here and there. To me, it's a good sign. It means you got a hive that's living somewhere, and they're hauling out the dead bees. Yeah, they're hauling them out, that's for sure. But that is, that is, The main thing is this time of the year with the fluctuation in temperatures is not to be feeding them. Let them kind of go into hibernation and let them do what bees do. They can take care of themselves, you know. But as soon as we get some warm weather, I see people posting all over. They're feeding pollen. They're feeding this. They're feeding that. Leave the poor critters alone. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. Okay. Over to Steve. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, Don. Um, hey. Two, two weeks ago, I mentioned that I'd like to come out and taking classes in March or April, but mm -hmm. after talking to one of your students that's here in Cleveland, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's Texas, um, uh, he, he mentioned that I should get up there you know, sooner, better than later. Um, I, I really want to get in where, while you're still building uh, hardware. Um, is January good? If you want to come down, we're working. I have a three-car garage in the back. I set up there and I got a two car grad garage attached to the house. So we don't have heat in the garages. If it's not raining, we can do the building out there in the garage. Now I'm not going to set up a production line. If you want to build say deeps, I'll build two to four, show you how to do it. Uh, I get in love where I don't want to let just anybody run the saws because the fingers will start to fly. Cause right. you know, everybody's got a different learning skill. If you come down and it's raining and you want to learn to make foundation, we make foundation on rainy days and days we can't work outside. Okay. And I even have people that, in fact, I've got someone brought logs over right now that want me to saw them up for them to make bee boxes. So you can use wood right off the sawmill to make bee boxes. We're not building cabinets. I add a sixteenth of an inch. When I cut it right off the saw, the next day I'm making boxes, I just add a 16th to the length. And I don't worry about them being super smooth. As long as they're square and they sit flat, that's all I'm looking at. Okay. All right. Well, I hope, okay. hope to see you in January. All right. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Over to Pat. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Well, let's see. For a dentist, I use the register, which is the little square thing Don was talking about. It's super easy. I take credit, debit, cash is always my favorite, but I can do it over the phone. I can do it in person. Uh, it's a very small percentage and you can print out all your reports very, very easily. I don't know how to run computers and I can do it so anybody can do it. Um, and then my other question was, and I don't mean to stir up any hate or discontent, but there's been a lot of conversation last week on the Facebook page about the guys that are going down and picking up your bees, Don, and are they resellers? North Carolina has this big law about it. Is, is there any chance that they should be getting a special permit to uh, carry your bees to North Carolina and get rid of them? 
North Carolina is real funny, so I'm just We asking. have certificates, and I don't know if everybody's familiar with certificates. I think I have some in the cabin back here. I can show you what certificates is, but I'm sure Jim's got a certificate. So the, uh, Joe May's showing one right Joe now. Joe May's got, yeah, there's, Joe May's got some. Uh, we, we put those on our nukes. We put them on there, and that is just as good. Uh, I've been selling bees for a very long time, and four years ago, Massachusetts was the only place that sent me a letter where I had to have an actual letter from the bee inspector that mm -hmm. it was, you know, free and clear. But that certificate is, uh, it's accepted pretty much all over the United States. Now, okay. you can't ship bees or take bees into Arizona. You have to be careful there, especially shipping queens. Okay. It's, it's what they call a closed state. Right. Is and that... then, you know, if you don't have an uh, import-export permit, don't be trying to ship bees out of the you know, United States up into Canada and Saskatchewan, places like that. Okay. All right. Well, I just thought I'd ask because there was a lot of conversation and I was a little concerned that I don't want somebody to report something and, and you know. If as long as, you know, like I have students come here and I believe Jim's got a whole handful of stickers one time. Yep. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to buy 100, 200 packages at a time or 50, 100 nukes, we give you extra ones. And, you know, it's up to you if you want to give them out. But they're completely legal to resell them. You can sell them for whatever, you know, the, the market will pay. And, you know, there's, you know, there's people going to come down here and buy in quantity to get a discount, turn around, and if they don't make 50 bucks on them, you know, I mean, that's the post office, probably 25 to probably $28 on a package, a three-pound package. That's what shipping is. But if you got someone like Greg that's going to personally bring them to you, which is a beekeeper, he's not going to throw them from one box to another. They're going to be in a whole lot better condition. Mm -hmm. And he's nukes. Greg's come here and picked nukes up, and I'll guarantee you the nukes is in better shape than if he would order them in the mail or had somebody else deliver them. So yeah. you pay for a service. It's like, you know, credit card. You're paying for a service. And he's not going to drive down here and spend, you know, 18 hours of his time and his fuel, you know, and hauled it back for nothing. Yeah. But, you know, uh, right now, you know, wherever you're at, nukes, if you're buying them in volume from us, we're selling them at 150. I mean, if you want to buy a thousand at a time, we'd probably give you a better deal. But right now, we're doing at the most 100 nukes per order because we already get quite a few orders, you know, to fill. Mm -hmm. So we're knocking off money on that. If you're buying up to like 25, we're selling them for 175 and there's people that take those up to Ohio, New York. They're marking them up $75. So if they take 10 up there, they've got them four or five free. So, yeah. you know, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah. It's just something to think about. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Over to Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Hey everybody. Hey. Um, <clears throat> um, Don, right there, like Greg and myself that bring bees up, packages and whatnot, you know, um, when you give them to us, it's our responsibility. Right. And that's on that's on us until we get it to that customer. So we're taking a big chance right there, right. too, you know. So, um, and I just want to put a plug in um, up here in South Central Virginia, um, taking orders for packages and nukes. And um, we'll be we're working on our website and have that coming up and so things are going pretty good if you're on my facebook page and you notice uh greg has posted on there and that thing lit right up if you just mentioned you got my bees you don't have to say they're alive even just you got my bees people want them so <laughs> it's like you got your foot in the door you got a ready-made business and jim's the same way i mean he he can't haul them fast enough it can't make them fast enough and haul them fast enough. <laughs> yep. Thanks. Okay. Jim, you got anything to say today? If you can hear me, my microphone sucks. Barely. We barely. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got, I'm taking orders right now. I'm filling up quick. And looking forward to seeing you again. Uh, okay. All the bees have been doing great. They've been here. Uh, we had a few days.
days are really cold, but it's uh, warmed up now. It was <laughs> you have any trouble at all selling fat B-man bees anywhere? Nope. As long as they know they want something to pick yard, they're happy. Okay. And let's see, over to Ernest. Go ahead, Ernest. Oh, wait, come on. Hang on. Yeah, Ernest muted down there. I, yeah, for some reason, it doesn't want to unmute people tonight. Try it on your end, Ernest. There you go. Okay, I had to unmute it myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a, a website up now, Blevins Bees, and I have uh, overwintered nukes, and I, ha I have queens. I have uh, some of Don's queens that I raised queens from. So I just wondered, Don, what uh, what the overwintered uh, uh, nuke go for uh, price wise? Well, there's people that's selling up there. Uh, Ron Stockwell, he's got some of my stock up there, and I think he's getting two twenty five for overwintered nukes up there, but which I think is cheap, personally. I mean, if you feel comfortable selling, they're your bees. You have to sell them for what you feel comfortable with. And right now, I'll tell you, there's a shortage out there with everything burned up in California and everything's flooded in the south and up the east coast. Bees are going to be hard to find. Well, do you usually take a uh, percentage down to get uh, get people uh, lined up uh, for your overwinter nukes, uh, so you know how many how many you can sell? Uh, if you're going to sell yours overwintered nukes, I would get a deposit on them. Okay, okay. I mean, you know, it, and they give them you keep twenty to twenty five percent if they decide for any reason. Now. If for some reason I take someone's deposit and if I had a heart attack or something I can't deliver, I'll give them the whole thing back. But if they call me up and say, well, we've changed our mind or Joe down the street or Mark or somebody else has got bees cheaper, I'm going to buy them there. I'm not going to give them the whole thing. I'm going to take it, you know, because I'm holding their spot for them. That's just business. Yeah, I just wondered how many I should sell. I don't want to sell down to I can't raise my own bees, though. Well, I don't have 70 hives, so. That's the thing that, you know, a lot of people say, you know. In fact, Dennis, we talked about that. He's going to wait one year because we went through that before. If you get a bunch of bees, you'll sell out and you won't have no stock. So, you know, unless you're planning coming down and buying, you know, a bunch of packages to replenish, but, you know, that's strictly up to you. Okay, well, if you're selling uh, nuke and you come down, you could buy two packages for the price of the nuke, then you get to visit me too. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I might be down with my son again this year. I'm trying okay. to get John, uh, neighbor John, to go down, but I don't see him in here tonight. Uh, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind bringing back a few packages. Let us know ahead of time. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Let me I'm surprised I got that name, you know, my own name and this Blevins Bees, and it it come up. So, <laughs> get it uh, get it trademarked if you're going to stay in business long. You know, I I'm waited too long to take care of all that for myself there, but you know, I'm glad I did now. Well, I don't think I'll be around that long. Hi hi. <laughs> okay, over to Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, Dom, when I was down there uh, visiting with you, I, I recall you telling a story about when you were a kid, your neighbor is kind of the one that got you into beekeeping as he was building stuff and talked into making some extra money. So mm -hmm. you've been keeping bees for a couple years by now, and you know, <laughs> I'm sure you've forgotten more than most of us are ever going to know. But um, if you had to do it all over again, you know, what's the, what's the hardest lesson that you had to learn, and how would you do that different? Well, the hardest lesson, I guess, is think you know it all and be bullheaded and won't listen to someone. I mean, that's, I'm giving free advice. I know I had a lady call me today and, and I'm, I said, you don't even need to buy bees from me, you know, think it out, you know, think ahead of time what you want to do. So, so that's where I, you know, I made mistakes listening to people that I thought was going to steer me right. And then they laughed at me and made fun of me at a bee meeting. So. From that point, I learned, you know, don't do it. And it actually had happened at a bee meet in Ohio. And uh, 
I had just been in a bees about four or five years, and I asked this old guy, you know, a question. And he said, well, do this, and do that. And, well, I did it, and I lost the bees. And, you know, I went up to him in the bee meeting, and I discussed it with him. I said, look, I've done exactly what you want. And then he stood up and pointed his finger at me like I was a fool, and he says, I was just funning with you. I was just kidding you, and you believe that crap? So that's why I try to tell someone, you know, give them the truth. You know, there's enough business out there. You don't have to cut someone down. And that's been my business philosophy. Help the other person up. It'll help you in the long run. That's a good, that's a good one. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Okay. Over to Dennis. Go ahead, Dennis. Yeah, I was going to let some folks know. I can bring up a few packages up toward Missouri, not too many. I've got quite a few I'm picking up. But if you need some haul, just contact me. And, yeah, you're right, Don. I'm going to take the packages I get from you and split, split, split. And then sell my nukes out of my own stock a little bit, just to kind of cover some expenses. Well, if you're selling over rented winter stock, you know, you can build them up there at your place there. Now, another thing is, yeah, I'm all the time looking for building materials. I mean, instead of buying full sheets, let people know that you, you'll have, uh, give them honey, trade some honey for old half sheets, part sheets of new OSB or Advantag plywood and build, um, five frame shipping boxes and what we do on a five frame shipping box we use either three quarter plywood or we use three quarter wood on the sides or that the end pieces and then the sides we can use anything from three eighths the bottom three eighths the top three eighths staple and i charge 25 dollars for it you know we charge 15 for a cardboard box and the selling point is the bees are in better condition in a wood box and then they can turn around and use it to transfer bees later, or they can use it as a swarm catching box. Well, I tell them they can bring their own brand new five frame box. Right. Yeah. I'll put them in, I'll raise them, or I can provide a cardboard box for them. But uh, they're about to wear me out, and I ain't even got started. <laughs> you can sell them, just let them know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, best thing to do is get you a web page up, get on my uh, Facebook page and post where you're at and how many you're going to have available. And you'll probably sell them out within a couple of weeks, guarantee it. Well, uh, I appreciate it. Another thing, you know, I, I touch on it every so often, but uh, in my bee yard, I run two rows of I call junk hives. And I think Mary and, and maybe Joe has probably seen them. And what you do is you go through your five frame boxes, your eight frame boxes, the stuff's got too much drone comb, too much stretch comb, you throw them in this junk box with no queen. And when it's the, the brood that's in there, it starts to hatch out, you accumulate one extra hive. And then in the meantime, you've got eight frames in there. You can cut eight frames of cells. So eight frames with at least 10 on each one, you're looking at 80 splits. So you got to build, build, build. And that way you keep a better frame for your customer. And then uh, if you're going to keep track of the year, I was showing people marking your queens, the mark of that year on that particular mark, put a dot on your frame at the end. That also, it takes the paint, excess paint off, and you won't paint the eyes of the queen. And then you can open that box up and see what color it is right away. You know what year you put that frame in there, so you know how old it is. And then I anything that is recycled, I bleach it out. And if you're running plastic, uh, what I found the best thing to do is you, you use lye, clean them with lye. They're super clean. Then turn around and get a block of your own beeswax and get a heat gun and heat the side up two strokes with that square piece of block. A bread pan is what you use to make a block of wax and two strokes across each side and it's completely waxed and the bees will jump on it. So, you know, I had people, you know, say, well, my bees won't draw plastic out or I put starter stripping and they won't draw it out. 95% of the time is they just don't want to feed the bees. Put the sugar to them, they'll feed. They, I mean, they'll draw wax. They have to. Yeah. I understand. Good information. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Over to Bruce. Go ahead, Bruce. <coughs> Can you hear me now? Yep. yep. Um, I'm building boxes, and uh, the best price I can find on a one by two, number two pine, eight foot long, is at our local 
lumber store for $1.23 a board foot. I found up in East Texas where they have a lot of pine trees, a sawmill, uh, 200 boards, a dollar per board foot. So I think I'm going to run up there next week and get me 200 eight foot boards. Now, Is it right off the sawmill? That's correct. They aren't plain. And I asked him about the cut. He says they leave just enough extra wood to run it through the planer. So it's pretty close to size. And I figure the bees don't care what the thickness of the wood is. What I do is a mice, I got a wood miser. And I set my own blade so I'm really close. I got a dial indicator so I keep it within half a thousandth left and right. What I would do is get on Wood Miser's website and see if you can find somebody in the northern part of Texas. Wood off the sawmill should be going for 35 to 40 cents a board foot. And I'm selling right here wood off my sawmill, $4 a board, which is eight and a half to nine foot, one by 12s. But I set my sawmill right at three quarters and I'm running 16,000 curve. So I'm actually running a few 30 seconds over the three quarters. And if you want to let it dry for 10 days, run it through a planer, set your planer at three quarters. If it doesn't clean up all the way, the side that gets some of the cleaning up, put it to the outside, it just holds paint better. But right off the saw, unpainted wood works good. It's worked for years. Very good. Other than that, I'm just building boxes. That's all you can build all you can because you ain't going to have time in three months. <laughs> okay. Over to Joey. Go ahead, Joey. Yeah. Um, Don, I know you're up in Lula, Georgia, and I know you mentioned as far as you would stop feeding the bees for sugar water. Um, should I start feeding the bees fondant? you know, go ahead and put fondant in there. And also as far as, uh, as far as our temperatures that we're having right now are dipping down in the, what, the thirties and coming back up to the low seventies. Um, what, what's your suggestion as far as feeding them exactly? I basically would, I'd lift the back of your hive up and see yeah. if you got some weight to it. If you got some weight, I wouldn't put fondant on. Lift okay. the bees slowly, you know, get used to the weather. And they start, because when you start putting fondant on it, whether they're going to need it or not, you're going to start to stimulate them one form or the other. So I don't want to do that. I want the bees to sort of back down, give them that space. Because you got some cold weather going to come in probably in the middle or the end of December and then the first to second week in this January. Right, right. And we, we got bees in South Georgia, and we won't feed again probably until the middle of February. Unless the I weather see. is awful warm, we'll start feeding. Uh, we'll feed two to two and a half to one syrup. Right, right. Okay. Also, um, when when is it too late to um, treat them with that oxalic acid vapor? Well, you can actually treat oxalic acid anytime the bees are flying. But you're not going to do that much good because your bees probably already are loaded with mites if you haven't treated them. Right. You've got right. at least four or five treatments in already towards the end. Right. Of the and so, the very latest, I would start October 1st. That would be the latest I would want to put a treatment on. Is that right? Yeah. I say. Okay. So, if, so being that I have not treated them so, for so far – or so put hope for the best. <laughs> but you would not you would not treat them like if I had an opportunity to do it say middle of the week this coming week you wouldn't do it I don't think you're going to get the effect or the, the, the treatment that you're looking for because right. if they're that untreated that far along you know right. you're not going to get that much results if you had that's a few right. that's going to die off uh, you know the mites die from you know Drop right. Off. right. You know, you're still running that chance. You're going to lose some in your population. And right. then, you know, your oxalic acid is another thing you want to look at. If you're dribbling or if you're vaporizing it, two different options there. Right. Right. You know, if if yeah. I did it, I, it, it would definitely be vaporizing it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I don't suggest using the dribble method, but if I was yeah. where you was at and I hadn't treated for a while, 
I believe right. I'd get me some of those blue shop towels and I would soak it in uh, oxalic acid and I'd put a whole one over the brood chamber on each one. Oh, would you? That, okay. But, you know, each situation is different, you know. Right. I'm, I'm going by, you say you hadn't treated and that's just going to no. be a shock treatment. Right. Absolutely. It's a lot harsher on the bees than the vapor. I say. Okay. And as far as the dead out, there's quite a lot of honey that was still left in that hive. So I'm going to just basically, if we get some warm weather, go in there and any, anywhere that I can on the other six hives, just put that, them honey frames in them other hives. Wouldn't you suggest that? Well, you could put them in there, but you don't want to stack a hive up too high because you get it too right. high, you're going to lose you know, the heat in that in there. Right. If there's not enough bees to cover it, you could want to get wax moth in there too. I got you. Yeah. Okay. See, every situation is is totally different. You know, if you've got a hive that's dead out and you've got another one right next to it, it's booming with bees. Right. I would take a, a paper, to, uh, a newspaper, single newspaper, and put it over it and just stack it on top and right. just leave it. You know, they might that's come right. up and chew through it or then they might not, but. It give you some protection against wax moth, you know, and ants. So right. you have to okay. take each situation and where you're at individually. Right, right. Yeah, all, all the other hives, I mean, they're even to this day there there's still quite a lot of activity, you know, as long as this one are they bringing the pollen in or are they just activity? You could be getting robbed out. I'm I'm still having some pollen come in. I mean, I'm well, I'm not pollen getting the problem. Coming in, out probably, you know, they're working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, as far as that dead out, that just totally caught me off guard. I mean, because they 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 were that was one of my strongest highs. You know, they they were doing so good. You know, then all of a sudden, boom. You know, so that's I don't part, know. That's part of we the live and we learn. You you, you got to be in commercial beekeeping. You got to do numbers. That's <laughs> why you you know you you split. Yeah. You lose a lot less or you gain a lot more. It's, it's, right, right, right. Okay, thanks, sir. Okay. Okay, over to where to go? We just moved. Where to go? Over to Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, Don. When you're building those boxes, after you get your uh, your your boards rough cut, and you probably chop them down on the table saw to get your overall lengths. Do you assemble it and leave your, your widths just a touch long and then square them up a after the box is assembled on the table saw to get it square? Well, basically what I'm doing is I'm running this, the wood on the sawmill. So on a band saw, you might have good straight sides, and then again, you might not. So I'm running my table saw at 10 inches. I run one side down, so I'm cutting my board just a hair over 10 Okay. So my first cut's 10 inches, and then I flip the board over and cut the other side, and I cut that at nine, at seven eighths, nine and seven eighths. Then I take it over to radio arm saw, and I chop it to the length. Then when I do my end pieces, I cut those, I assemble, I rabbit my end pieces out, three quarters all the way around. Then I stand the rabbits down, downward on a table saw, a flat surface, and hold the boards together down on that staple them together then i take them back out onto the sawmill and i trim off a 64th or a 32nd okay. that trues the bottom up okay. and then sometimes you have to run it around twice so you, and then you have to drop your blade down so it don't come too high it just takes three quarters off if you come up three inches it's going to make that circle and then it's hard to get that little circle off the, the table saw that's okay. how I build them, and yeah, I have no sense. problems with them. And then at that point, then I bring them in, then I put them on the table saw, and I use a dado blade, put the handles on. Okay. Yep, that, that's what we ended up doing last year, and it, that when we switched to just shoring them up one last time on the table saw, right. everything laid flat, they stacked right. flat, they, were, they didn't wobble, so I was curious if that's what you did too. That's the little details a lot of people come here to pick up because sometimes – I don't explain everything on a video and I'm doing things sometimes so fast people ain't picking up that, but that final little step makes them actually lay flat. Good and deal. the reason Thanks, I cut them that tall is because 
maybe four or five years from prying boxes apart, you want to come in here and set it up against your fence and barely shave it. I mean, you could take a 32nd off there or 64th, just enough to true that boogered up edge from your hive tool on. And Get a couple more I got years boxes out. out there that's 25, 28 years old. Wow. And then uh, <laughs> as far as handles, Dadu Blade, I think, works the best. I see a lot of people that's putting blocks on the ends. Not a good idea. I would rather have a, a box with no handles on it than to put a block on because wherever you cut wood apart and you put that block on, it seems that once you separate the, the wood, it rots out from the inside. And, yeah. you know, that's another reason I rabbit my joints. I don't box joint. Box joint, you've got square cuts on there, and you've got twice as much ends exposed to the weather. So, yeah, you know, over the years, you pick up little things here and there, and that's, you know, I'm not boasting on the beach yet, but this is one thing. You pick up little details here and there all the way across, and you pick up 50, 60 years worth of a trial and error and mistake, you know, you don't make those same mistakes. Well, I'm glad glad you're there to pass it on so we can uh, learn from your mistakes and do better. Well, I'm trying not to bore anybody, but <laughs> <laughs> keep repeating myself a lot of times. Thanks, Don. Okay. Okay. That'll do it for the questions for tonight, unless anybody else has any other questions. I see no other hands going up, so we'll call it a night. Next chat will be December 15th. Thank you, Don. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Appreciate you showing up. Spread the word. Everybody. Everybody.